Usually when we work out index numbers, instead of one single item, we have what's called a basket of items. And I've got an example here, coffee, tea and sugar. And the prices are changing at different rates for the three different items. And we would like to uh, make up an aggregate index of the whole total, the basket of these items. Now, there are two obvious ways of doing this, neither of which is quite the best, but they are the simplest. One obvious way is to find the total price in 2001 by clicking, dragging, summing, which is home and sigma. And so the cost was 194. And then we do the same in 2002. Click and drag, home, sigma, 234. So the index number in 2002 relative to 2001 is given by the new value divided by the original value times 100. 120.6. The price, the total price, has gone up by 20.6%. There's another way of doing it though, which you might have thought of, and that's to look at the change in price of each item and take the average. And we do that in the following way. If we go over here, we can work out the index of coffee. It will equal the new value divided by the old value times 100. So coffee has gone up by 10%, which is fairly clear from 60 to 66. And we can then do that for the other two items. And we can see they've got quite different inflation rates, rates of price increase, 10%, 16 and a quarter, and sugar's gone up by almost 40%. And so what we might think to do then is to say, let's take the average of these three rates to get the overall rate of inflation of our basket. And we do this by adding these different inflation rates. So click and drag, home, sigma. And then we want to divide that by three because we're taking the average. So I can put that here. It will equal this number divided by three. And we get 121.7. So from that point of view, the average price of the items has gone up by 21.7% whereas the basket of items itself went up by 20.6%. So we can see that these two methods, both apparently quite sensible, actually give different results. Next time we'll go on to look at a more sophisticated method which gives a more sensible result. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.